that interview went so awful. I literally cried the whole way home. I, I literally thought my, my chances of an offer were out the window. It went so badly. Hello everyone, my name is Christina and this video is going to be how I got into Newcastle Medical School. So starting off with GCSEs, I went to a pretty average, if not below average GCSE school. Um, I got fairly good grades, I got 5 A stars, 5 A's and 2 B's. I knew I wanted to do medicine from an early age so I made sure to do as much as I could, things like extracurricular activities, things like doing my research, I started all those kind of things from an early age, probably around GCSE if not earlier, which I recommend doing if you're someone that is really keen on medicine. So by the end of GCSEs I knew I wanted to do medicine, I had fairly average if not, you know, just I say average grades and I went into year 12 wanting to study um, biology, chemistry and maths at A level. I also did an, an EPQ which is pretty much where you write a long essay about whatever you want but obviously me wanting to do medicine I made sure to write about a medicine topic so I chose HIV. And also in year 12 I made sure that from day one I was doing lots and lots of research on work experience, volunteering, any summer schools I could go to, um, just anything like that. I really wanted to boost my chances of getting into medical school. So I made sure to do lots and lots of research. One of the best things I did to prepare for medical school was probably go to a summer school. Summer schools are honestly amazing. You learn so much about medicine because you're literally living like a medical student and you're able to get to know the facilities, get to know what it's like to do you know, PBL sessions and go to lectures and stuff. But summer schools are great because if you have maybe a low household income, you're the first in your family to go to university, or, or if you have free school meals, anything like that. If you go, if you live in an area where the postcode is, um, there's not many people who go to university in that area, you're more likely to be accepted onto these summer schools. And they do so many great things for you. So you can get a guaranteed interview or you can get a lower offer. So I knew that I wanted to stay relatively close to home. And I'm, I'm from the Northeast, so I knew that Newcastle, Sunderland were pretty much the unis that were, they were the only universities in the Northeast. So they were my top two. And I'd also been to Newcastle a couple of times. I I'd gone there for some work experience and um, I also had an MAD day there. I talk about this in one of my blog posts, I'll link that below in the description. And so yeah, Newcastle was, I absolutely loved. I loved the city, it was an amazing place. Sunderland was a fairly new medical school, so um, you know, I like the fact that their facilities were brand new and everything was, you know, like state of the art, but I didn't like how there was no older medical students to speak to if I needed some help with anything. So Newcastle was definitely my number one. I wanted to look at universities that I had a high chance of getting into. So after doing my research, I found Plymouth and Liverpool, which um, were in big cities again. I wanted to be in a big city, that was one thing as well. So I thought they were my two other options that would be really, really good, which is a number one thing. If you're applying to medicine, the key to getting in is applying to your strengths. If you're thinking, how can I get into medical school? It's so competitive. The number one thing is apply to your strengths. Honestly, that is where most people fall down. If you've got loads of A stars at GCSE, have a look at the unis that really want that. Or if you've got a high UCAT or high BMAT, have a look at the universities that want a high UCAT or high BMAT because that's how you're gonna get your interview and that's how you're gonna get your offer and that's how you're gonna get in. So definitely apply to your strengths. So then I started to prepare for the UCAT at the end of year 12. I use Medify, which is a website which has loads and loads of questions for the UCAT, I think for the BMAT as well. They also have some personal statements like services and stuff. I highly recommend Medify, I use them. I never saw a question twice, there were so many questions there. So you'll definitely have like an abundance of questions that you, if you spend four to five weeks and roughly two to three hours a day, you probably won't get through everything. So it's a great resource. I think you'll probably see on the internet a lot that you can peak too early if you start practicing too early on. And that's definitely true. Make sure to do, I'd say roughly five, four to five weeks is enough. Any more than that is too much. So then the UK cat came around. Well, I called it the UK cat back then because that's what we called it back then, but it's now the UCAT. So when I did my UCAT, I ended up getting um, a score of 2550, which I think works out as 637.5 as an average. Even though this score was above average for my year, um, it, I, I literally like burst out crying when I got it because, and because I'd done my research, I knew that Newcastle's uh, applicants mostly had really high UK cats. So I just thought this is way too low, like 637.5, I think is just nowhere near, um, you know, 700. So I thought that my chances were out the window. Although, 
one of the main reasons why I applied to Newcastle was because they have a widening participation scheme called Partners, where basically, again, if you meet certain criteria, you can go on a summer school and then they give you a lower offer. So I thought maybe, you know, they will lower the UK CAT requirements, so maybe I'll have a chance. So in the end, I still decided to apply. Newcastle, out of my four options, was pretty much the only university that was quite risky for me. The other three were really safe, I met all the requirements so I didn't worry too much, which I actually recommend to you guys applying. Um, I call this the three to one rule. So apply to three unis that you meet all the requirements for, you, you, it's a really safe option, you're highly likely to get in, and then maybe have one uni which is like your dream uni or you know like a really risky option which you really wanna go to, but it's not, it's not that risky because you've got three really safe options. So even if you don't get into your dream uni or the risky one, you've got, um, you're still gonna, you most likely will still get into medical school because you've got three really safe options. I hope that makes sense. So yeah, having done my UCAT, got an above average score, but it wasn't quite enough to apply to Newcastle, but I still thought I'd have a chance because of the partner scheme. I then thought that there'd be no need for me to do the BMAT just because my um, you know, my school was good enough for most of my uni, so I thought there's no need to do the, the VMAT happens in, I think, September, October time, so it would overlap with, you know, the start of year 13, and I really wanted to focus on applying to UCAS, my personal statement and revision, so I thought there's no need for me to do VMAT. But if you're someone who has, you know, a fairly low UK cat, it's something, UCAT, sorry, um, it's worth thinking about whether or not you want to do the BMAT just because it really will open up um, a bunch of other options for you in terms of where you can apply. It's worth having a think about if you have a low UCAT score. So then year 13 came around and my big focus was going to be on revision and interviews. I had pretty much nothing else in the way. There was no, you know, most of my personal statement was done. I started really, really early. I started probably after mock exams when like no one had started thinking about it then. Um, so yeah, that was the main focus for me. So I'd recommend starting your personal statement end of year 12, definitely, if you can, like just after mock exams, I'm sure you'll have some mock exams at the end of year 12. I'd say start around that time because most people after mock exams, they're probably gonna relax and not do any work, but that's probably the perfect time to start, especially because you're gonna need to give your personal statement to as many teachers as you can just to get feedback. So after mock exams, if you've got your first draft, that's the perfect time because teachers, you know, they won't have much to do up in that time. No one else has started. So it's a great opportunity for you to get in there um, and get as much feedback as you can. So then by the time that my UCAS had been sent off, personal statement done, everything done, um, there was a long waiting period and that is, you know, really, really like nerve wracking for a lot of people. It was for me, definitely. Um, it's, it's a bit, it's not the greatest time because you see a lot of other people getting interviews and you're kind of like, you know, where am I? You know, how come I haven't got any yet? Um, but definitely just be patient, honestly, just because someone's got theirs really, really quickly, it doesn't mean that their application's better or worse than yours. It's just a matter of that, you know, the order that they get them in and the order that they process them in. So don't worry at all if you're waiting a long time compared to other people. In the end, I ended up, I managed to get four interviews, which is amazing, um, which was, yeah, I just couldn't believe that. To be honest, I could talk about my actual interviews for hours because they were such a roller coaster. But in summary, I had my son's in the interview first. I practiced quite a lot with teachers. I had loads of prep and it didn't go so great, it literally went awful. I remember some of the stations, the questions I just, I'm prepared for, but I think the nerves like just got the best of me and I really didn't know how to answer them. And one of the stations I was literally on the verge of tears in, it just went so, so awful, literally like the worst interview ever. And I cried the whole way home. I thought my chances of, it, of an offer were out the window. I really thought like, oh, I've, I've just messed up now. Then the, my next interview after that was Newcastle and obviously this being like my number one uni, I really wanted to go to this one. I made sure to practice a bit more with teachers. Um, I really tried to work on my nerves and not let like anxiety get the best of me. So then the interview came around and it honestly was like a polar opposite. It went so, so well. Every question that I prepared for came up. Um, you know, I, I wasn't nervous at all. I think the people at the Newcastle interview were super friendly, which helped. Um, and yeah, it went so, so well. I was so happy with that interview. So then I um, I finished those two interviews. I kind of, you know, obviously I went back to school for a bit and then um, I ended up getting two offers from Newcastle and Sunderland, my number one and number two choice, which I was honestly shocked by, especially from Sunderland. I, I thought I'd like ruined it. So that was such a nice surprise. And because they were my firm and insurance, straight away I put them down as firm and insurance on UCAS so that I wouldn't have to prepare for those interviews. I could just focus on revision, focus on exams. So, and it means that hopefully someone else could get those interviews because I couldn't go to them. So I thought that would probably be the best decision. 
So after interviews, the only thing to focus on from them was exams and revision. So I spent, you know, months and months just focusing on revision and exam technique and things like that. And then exams came around. I remember feeling quite confident about all of them. I don't remember having, you know, I don't remember having any like horrible, horrible exams. Some of the maths ones were a bit tricky, but I remember feeling quite confident after my exams and like celebrating with friends and stuff. So yeah, that was quite nice. So then the end of year 13 came around and I took part in the Partners Newcastle Summer School, which was amazing. Again, it's just a chance to live life like a medical student. So I highly recommend having a look at my blog post and seeing if you qualify for any of the summer schools, not just the Newcastle one, but any of them across the UK. And yeah, it meant I also got, got a lower offer. So instead of three days, I only needed to get a BB, which was a really nice safety net. I didn't have to worry too much about exams, even though I'd, con I'd consistently get, you know, three A's, if not above during school, during year 12 and year 13. So I wasn't too worried, but it was just nice to have that safety net of a BB instead of three A's. But then results, they came around and I found out that I got a, a B and I, that was, that was just, I don't know. I wasn't too fussed because I was so over the moon that I'd got in. You know, I, I checked track first and it said, oh, you've been accepted. And I was like, yay. But it was just a bit like, what? I, I really worked hard. Like, I worked so hard. My teachers like never doubted that I'd get, you know, below an A. If anything, I was predicted, I can't remember now, but I think I was predicted A star AA. So that was a bit of a surprise. One thing I do want to mention is that I've noticed that the end of year exams tend to be a bit harder than the mock exams or the specimen papers that you have so do keep that in mind it's never too early to start revision honestly from day one of year 12 if not you know from early stages of year 12 definitely start revising if you can the end of year exams do tend to be quite tricky i think my grades show that because honestly i, I wasn't expecting that at all but i was just so happy to have got in i wasn't too like bothered about it <laughs> I've also written a massive long blog post about um, you know my journey. I go into like loads of detail and I give you I think 15 tips on things that you can kind of take away from my journey and things that I've learned. So definitely make sure to check that out. I'll link everything in the description. Let me know in the comments what type of videos you'd like to see. I've got loads and loads of ideas planned, but I'd love to know what you guys want to see. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.